Hey, thanks for clicking on this video and checking out our church service. Whether you're new to Salem or been coming for a while, welcome and hope you enjoy the service. To skip to different parts of the video, there are chapter markers in the description below. So click on one of those to be taken right to that part of the video. Our website has a lot more information about us, so check us out there too. If you're in the Duluth Superior area, you're welcome to join us here at Salem anytime. If you're watching from afar, we hope and pray that we can be an encouragement to you and partner with you for about an hour to help you encounter God, equip people, and extend the gospel. Good morning, Salem. Good morning, Salem Online. I'm Jesse. I'm the Hospitality and Outreach Director, and it is my privilege to worship with you guys this morning. So I think that's a great thing. Um, so also with that, if you're new or visiting, uh, I would love to talk to you. I'll be at the Welcome Center. And if you have any complaints as far as our hospitality here at the church, Stephen would love to hear them. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, you know, it is a, I've been really enjoying this. It has been an absolute blessing. So uh, please reach out to me if you want to go grab coffee. I would love to hear your story and get coffee. So um, <laughs> with that, we have the video. Hey, hey, YouTube church fam. Here's what's up at Salem. Hey, thanks for clicking on this video and checking out our church. If you wanna get connected with us here at Salem, consider filling out the digital connect card linked in the description box and fill it out with as much information as you feel comfortable sharing. Uh, and later on this week, someone from Salem is gonna reach out to you to connect with you and answer any questions you may have about our church. As a church, we support many local and global missions. And this month we are highlighting uh, New Hope for Families and they're doing amazing work in the foster care system. And actually next week, they will be here uh, to give an update on their ministry. And also we are highlighting the Johnsons serving uh, with Kids Alive International in Guatemala. Please head to the missions page of our website for more information on both of these ministries. September 16th through the 18th, that's a Friday through a Sunday, uh, is Women's Fall Retreat. And so make sure you are signed up and registered for that. Jill Mickelson from Life 97.3 is gonna be your speaker that weekend. Uh, and so I don't know for sure, because you know I can't go, but I think it's gonna be a blast. We have a men's small group starting back up on September 6th. And this small group is going to meet the first Tuesday of every month here at Salem at 6.30 in the morning in the Remedy Room. And it's called Men's Fraternity. It's our men's small group here at Salem. And so uh, Stephen's gonna be starting a new topic. There's gonna be food, there's gonna be laughs. So men, uh, if you are desiring deeper community and a deeper relationship with Jesus, please join us in those mornings. August 29th, we are having staff training, so the Salem offices will be closed. As we are careening towards the school and ministry year, uh, if you are going to be doing any volunteering with children, uh, you have to attend the September 7th Safe Place training. Uh, this is a requirement because it brings all of us up to date on uh, the policies and some of the legal things of serving with kids. So please mark your calendars for September 7th for our Safe Place training. On the night of September 11th, we'll be having a live music, food truck festival, uh, and worship night. It's gonna be a fun time from five to seven o'clock. And so uh, please come hungry. We're gonna have Oasis Del Norte uh, here to serve us. We're gonna have some coffee, some ice cream. It's, it's gonna be a fun time uh, as a church family. And also we're going to have, like I said, live music. So not necessarily the worship band, but we're gonna have some, some other music playing uh, during that five to six time and then a worship time from six to seven. So please join us on September 11th. All right, that's it for the announcements this week. So if you need any more information on these events, head to salemcovenant.org slash events. So up next, our worship team is gonna lead us in worship and the lyrics will be on the bottom part of this screen for you to follow along with however you feel comfortable. And as you engage with us over the next hour or so through the music and the message, we hope and we pray that you encounter God. Well, good morning, church. We are excited to worship with you. The Word of God says when we're together, He is there with us. Amen. And we are here together, united, to worship Him, to give Him all the glory and all the honor. And I want to invite you to just put everything else aside. Put all your um, 
any situations, any distractions. Put anything else aside and just focus on him this morning. Let's just worship him this morning for his goodness and his greatness, his faithfulness. There are so many examples in the Bible where people were worshiping and praising and the walls and the chains that was holding them down broke away just while they worshiped. And I want to see us do that together this morning as one body. Amen. Let's worship together.
Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come thou fount of every blessing To my heart to sing thy praise Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise but Teach me some melodious song Some by flaming tongues above Praise the mountain, fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy Safely to arrive at home. Jesus saw me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a feather, guide my wandering heart to be. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel that. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart. Take and seal it. Seal it for.
break the chains that hold me down. You gave your life, now grace upon you. Pray. so heavy on my heart this morning if the Bible says that we'll be known by our love for each other that we are his what would we be known for if we didn't love each other you know if you think about the opposite if loving each other and caring for one another shows the world Jesus what does it mean if we do not care for each other if we do not consider one another what does it show the world if we do not put our own ideas and our own agendas aside and we do not put each other first, above ourselves? What is the picture that the world gets when we are selfish instead of selfless? I just feel it so heavy on my heart this morning. We're in a day and an age where this world, this country, this city needs to see Jesus. And the Bible gives us a clear answer. They'll know that you are mine by the way that you love each other. If we do not stand united, if we do not put our own agendas and ideas aside, if we do not become selfless, 
the devil's already won. <laughs> and we're just, we're just going from Sunday to Sunday. We have to become selfless. In putting God first, that's putting your neighbor above yourself. That's what Jesus said. Loving God above all and loving your neighbor like yourself. I'm going to invite you to really sing this with me. And I come from a background where we close our eyes and our, our hands in the air. And if that's not the way you worship, that's fine. But I want to invite you to really worship with me right now. Let's sing this as one body, united, putting everything else aside, putting Jesus first. Can we do that? Lord, this morning we want to put you first above all. We know that your word says that putting you first means putting our neighbors above ourselves. We want to put you first, Jesus. Right now, we, we make it a conscious, a conscious to- choice, a conscious decision to put you first. We are one in the Spirit. We are one. Only Jesus. 
It is easy to sing about God's love and to be united. Not always easy to live that out when we're in real world situations. And it's truly those moments where Jesus needs to shine through us in those uh, moments when we are overcome by anger and emotions and where we are led by the flesh and not by the spirit. And I'm amazed and frustrated so many times with myself, you know, because I'm guilty of that too, where I'm responding out of anger and there's maybe hard or words that's harsh. Um, and this morning, two things maybe for us. First of all, a prayer and us reaching out to God say God remove my heart of stone give me a heart of flesh if your heart is hard then you you struggle to show love God can do it I want to encourage you to just reach out this morning and to ask the Holy Spirit to come in to your life. And in this morning, maybe an action step for us is maybe a moment of repentance. where we talk a big talk about being united. And yet, so many times when we're outside of the church building where we stab each other in the back and where we're not united and where we don't show love and where we talk ill about each other. So I want to encourage you this morning for us not to just sing about it. But let's act on this song and on this prayer. Say, God, give me words that's gentle, words that builds up. And maybe you need to repent this morning in those moments where you have not built up the church and where you have spoken ill or fellow believers. So I want to give you guys just a moment to respond in whatever way the Holy Spirit is laying on your heart this morning. And then we'll sing that song again, We Are United, as the Holy Spirit ministers to us this morning.
talking about um, summer slump. Now, a lot of times, especially when you live in Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, you don't always think about a summer slump, right? It's like we live for our summers. Every moment that Vanessa has to be in the sun, she'll be out there. And um, this week was a little more difficult to find that sunshine. And um, but sometimes winters are really hard, but when we're honest, I mean, we go through those moments of valleys and mountaintop experience, either in the winter or in the summer. Just, you know, we all experience that throughout our life. Um, I was watching a documentary on, some, uh, on two baseball players about several weeks ago, and they showed about them breaking the all-time home run um, record. And one of the um, athletes talked about a, a, a batting slump. And a lot of times, baseball players will experience this kind of towards the end of the season, because that season is long. I mean, they play a lot of games, and I can imagine you might get really tired of baseball. And game after game after game, and then there's the added pressure of you gotta perform every day, and especially when you're raking in the millions and you're maybe a well-known player, as like fans expect you, fans show up, they pay a lot of money for you to play well. And nobody wants to pay, pay a lot of money, spend money, to go to a game and your hero, somebody you're looking forward to, um, to play well, deals with a, a batting slump. Kind of a quote from a uh, uh, website, baseball is a game of ups and downs. Failure is in inevitable, part of life in the big leagues, but sometimes the downs drag on for especially long time, testing a player's physical and mental fortitude. And this is true for us spiritually and emotionally as well. It is really hard when you go through a slump spiritually. And sometimes those things can be short, but it's hard when you're dealing with slums for a long season. Um, and we have the luxury or maybe the comfort or the, the privacy of a not a thousand or a million fans showing up 
to put that pressure on us when we are dealing with a spiritual slump. You know, nobody sometimes cares. You're not in the spotlight. Um, and one such athlete is a Baltimore player. I don't know if he's still with them. This was kind of from 2019. And they paid him $161 million, uh, Chris Davis. And so uh, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of pressure. And the streak of, and his streak kind of being in a slump, streak of 47 consecutive at-bats without a hit, <laughs> setting a new record for the longest hitless streak by a position player in Major League history. Now, I can imagine if you're in that moment and you're getting paid and you have fans that's showing up and you want to do well, you know how to hit that ball and then you, yet you're there, you show up for the game, you maybe have that talk and you just tighten up and you can't do it. And again, you strike out. That's a frustrating place to be at. Uh, that's been my golf game. I've been in a golf slum since 1992. <laughs> Maybe next summer. After the sermon, I'm going to have to go and play golf after my sermon today. Now, when we think about kind of a slump, there's so many things that play into it, right? We have all kinds of battles that we're dealing with that can create spiritual frustrations and emotional um, frustrations in our lives. And so we just think about the things that we battle. It's our flesh. Um, when we do sin, when we give into the flesh and not the Holy Spirit, and then we know Satan is at work. When we read Ephesians, it reminds us that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the, the evil spirits and um, strongholds that's at work. And we just don't know. I was sharing with Vanessa this week. I just, man, I can just sense in our own life and some spiritual attacks that's happening. And then in the world, you know, when we have this strong pull from the world and uh, some of the examples and the things that we're, we're facing. And these things can really make us emotionally and spiritually tired. And a lot of times we might go through a hard time and we don't even know. And you might not even have the awareness that some of these things are in, in play. So what do you do? And sometimes you can feel like, oh, you're the only person going through that. But just want to remind you this morning that um, you see several biblical characters that, in a sense, experience the same thing. Just think about the life of David. He's constantly in a cave and um, challenges in his life. Job, Moses, Peter. I'm always fascinated with Elijah after such a spiritual victory. Um, and then to be in a dark place where it's just, God, take my life. Uh, I'm, oh, I feel overwhelmed. And this morning, I want to share with you a, a wonderful story. And we're going to have to cut this story short. Um, so I won't do all of it, I don't think. But if you want to turn your Bibles or your Bible with me to Exodus chapter 17. Easy book to find. It's the second book in the Old Testament. So Exodus 17. And we will start to read in um, verse 1. Let's go up to verse 7, I think, for now. We'll see where we're at with time. I'll give you just another minute to find it. So Exodus 17, starting in verse 1. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So I'm just going to pause there. If you want to make a couple of notes here, I just uh, give you a 
background on the story, we know that um, you have God's people. They've been in slavery. God called Moses to lead them out of Egypt. And we have seen some uh, a lack of faith in their lives, and God's got them on this journey, 40 years in the wilderness. And he's teaching them to be to be people of faith again and to really put their trust and hope in him. And so we kind of read some of the things that they're experiencing with their time in the wilderness. And so we have a moment here in chapter 17, and just again it reminds us, verse 1, the whole Israelite community. So think a million, a million and a half people. Now, if we're honest, if you have several kids, that can be hard sometimes to lead your family, right? Of two, three, four, five, six people. But to lead a million, million and a half, two million people, that's a whole nother level. So you're this whole community set up from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded now in a sense yes they might be spiritually lost but they're not lost God is leading them this is a key point that I want to just highlight since they camped at Rephidim now I want you to make a notice this place it means rest stop rest stop but there was no water for the people to drink. Now, imagine if you're on this journey, you're traveling, and we, we've seen this next to the freeways, that little sign. I, we got to stop there as a family a lot after having a, a large size cup of coffee. And you pull into this rest stop to, a lot of them have this vending machine. You can maybe fill up, get water, get a Pepsi, and then you want to use the restroom. Now, this has happened to us where we have pulled in. I mean, so even if, I mean, if your bladder is really full and you see that sign of a mile or two miles, especially with kids, I mean, you're really concerned as they're holding there. It seems like that mile is like a hundred miles, right? And you just hold on. I just took my car through the car wash this week. Don't do anything foolish, weird. And so you pull into that rest stop. And I don't know if you've experienced this, but we've been at some, especially you maybe go to South Africa, and it's locked. Well, that's like, guess I'm finding a tree. But you have an expectation that you will be able to find rest at the rest stop. And here God is leading his people to a rest stop. And yet we will find that there's not really rest for them. There's two things that they're dealing with. They're dealing with uh, some conflict. Some internal and some external when you... Read the rest of the uh, chapter, verse 8. And so we're going to just kind of see how they respond as they camp at this rest stop. So let's continue. But again, they're in God's will. They're exactly where God wants them. They're at the bathrooms and they find that the bathrooms are locked. And they're trying to use the water fountain. And it's not working kind of like COVID season. When they shut things down and you see these poor kids and they're at the water fountain. They've been running in the gym and then it's like, there's no water. And that's the picture. So what do they do? Well, they do what we all do. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to 
the test. Now, interesting when you dig a little deeper with this word quarrel, um, we don't read the intensity here, but it means that they are angry. It happened a couple of times with us where we've been to the cities at the airport and you wanna, you're hungry, it's after church, you want, drive to the airport, and it's like, man, I'm ready for some Chick-fil-A. You know, you're drooling as you think about that Chick-fil-A, the menu and the chicken and the burgers, and then you get there, it's like, and they're closed. It's like, man, it's Sunday. What are they thinking? These church people. Now you got to do McDonald's. They're angry. And I says, why, Moses asking, why are you testing me? Why are you testing the Lord? And I want you to write in there kind of that testing means in a sense can we trust God? Can we really trust God? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses, and they said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock uh, die of thirst? You know, that is so typical of us, right? As when we're dealing with hard things and we may be going through a slump and we're not getting our will and now we're just angry at the, the, the leaders, we're angry at God. You know, when we're dealing with a slump and this is what we're seeing here, I mean, they're just really frustrated. Uh, it's actually getting so intense that they're ready to kill Moses. You're going to see this actually in the prayer when Moses is praying towards God. say, God, these people are so mad. They're thirsty and hungry. I mean, I know. It's like I get quite upset when I'm hungry. Verse 4. So this is chaos. I mean, this is not a good place to be at. And this is not the first time. We actually, when we read through Scripture, we see them complaining all the time. And this is beautiful, beautiful verse 4. Let's see what, how Moses reacts in this moment. Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am, what am I to do with these people? It's a good question. What do you do with this million, million and a half, two million people, Lord? They're angry. They're almost ready to stone me. And the Lord answered Moses, go out in front of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the, the Nile, and go. And in verse 6, I want you to highlight this. This is another beautiful verse. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Now, Moses is asking as they're complaining and they're bringing all of their complaints to Moses. And I can imagine that Moses is really going through a low point in this season. I mean, I don't know about you just traveling. You're traveling uh, by foot. Um, we had the opportunity when we were in Israel to be on this kind of this high area and you look into the wilderness and it is dry, there's really nothing. And you can imagine two million people going through that. You're hungry, you're thirsty. Maybe they're not that hungry at that moment because the Lord provided food for them. But when you have experienced intense thirst and you're just craving it, and so they have a, um, a real reason to, to be crying. They have a real reason to be angry and frustrated. It's like, okay, Moses, what now? Are we going to die? 
Did God bring us this far to see how we suffer and to leave us? And again, I want to bring this back. God is leading them exactly where they need to go. He's there with them. But he's teaching them. And he's teaching them probably the important principle of, hey, trust me even in those low moments. I mean, if we're honest, it's not like they have not seen God's faithfulness before. I mean, just think about some of the earlier events. An angel of, uh, uh, an angel of God and a pillar of cloud and fire guided the multitude. You think about the Red Sea. The Egyptians' chariot wheels were made to, to swerve. And the army was drowned in the sea. Bitter waters were made sweet and drinkable. And so these guys have seen miracle after miracle and God's faithfulness in the wilderness. And yet they're on a place again as soon as it gets hot. And, they're in, and Moses, in, this, in a sense, I can imagine this slum. It's hot again and it's like, now I just want to complain. And you lose focus of, man, God's faithfulness time after time after time after time. One more, manna rains from heaven for bread. God's provision. He didn't just lead them to die. He's got a plan and a purpose for them, and the situation might really feel overwhelming for them. But God's at work, and so today, just want to remind you, remind myself, because I fail kind of this story in my own life, so many times that even if you're in a slump right now, spiritually, emotionally, God's there. God's got you on a journey. Don't be discouraged. Let's continue. Verse 6, I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb, strike the rock, and water will come out, out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called this place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled, and because they tested the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us? Or not, at least in my Bible, Bible, and when you read docu- um, uh, commentaries, you might see a little note there. Massa means testing, and Meribah means quarreling. And so Moses names this kind of off the attitude of the people and what they're experiencing in that moment. And so you've got people that's mad, and Moses goes and he cries out to the Lord. And God tells him, hey, I've got the solution. I've got the answer for you. Go and hit that rock. And the Lord did this profound miracle. Now, my time is up, but I want to just leave with you one significant scripture. 1 Corinthians 10, 4. This is so beautiful of what that all symbolized in Exodus. 1 Corinthians 10, and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. So in that moment, and that experience, that rock represented Christ. And God wanted to teach them, say, drink from me, in those hard moments. In your Bible app, um, I've created a link on some sermon notes, beautiful sermon. If you get a chance, I wanna encourage you to read through that and study some of the scriptures that's in there. It's gonna be so 
more meaningful for you if you just take some time because there's a lot that's going on. Our time just ran out this morning. But some lessons that we actually learned from Moses that I want to leave with you. What do you do when you're in a spiritual slump? Because again, summer can be hard. Our schedule's kind of out of whack. All kinds of summer activities. We may be not in fellowship or in church the whole time because of traveling and things that's going on. And so you can feel like, man, I'm just struggling spiritually. So some things that we learned from this passage on things that we can do. This morning, I want to share with you some of them. First of all, cry out to God. When we go through hard times and when we're in a low place, it's so easy to feel overwhelmed that it's even difficult to pray. And there's this invitation, we see it in the life of Moses, that he runs to God. It's got to start there. Do not be lazy. Do not be so overcome mentally. Um, because a lot of times when you're in this low place, the last thing you want to do is pray. The last thing you want to do is read your scripture. And Satan will really in that moment and your flesh in that moment will hinder you to pray. But you got to be, you got to press in. You got to be intentional to say, I want to get out of that state. When baseball players are in that slump, their coaches will spend some extra time with them to get and they'll see psychologists to just kind of get out of their own heads and to help the coaches will help them. You got to be intentional. And so for us this morning, if you're down, you feel spiritually dry, you will have the answers. You can get out of that slump. God is faithful. We just got to cry out. Psalm 50 says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you and you will honor me. God wants you to cry out. He's ready to hear from you. And then remind yourself that God is with you. We have Emmanuel. We have the Holy Spirit. And as I said, verse 6 it says, I will stand there before you by the rock. God is standing with them. And they're so blinded by their immediate needs and their concerns and their fears that they're missing that moment that God is standing right there with them. This morning as you're dealing maybe with sickness, health, uh, health challenges, financial challenges, relationships, God is standing there with you. You're not alone. And this one is near and dear to me. And I think this is important. And I think we struggle with this one. Share your struggles with godly people. And you will actually see this come into play in the rest of that chapter. I'm going to step on some toes this morning, so I might offend you, but I'm doing it because I love you and I care for you. Within our Minnesota culture, and maybe it's Swedish, I'm not sure, a lot of times we're so private. And our lives are falling apart. And we don't open up. And then you're going through that hard time all by yourself. And there's nobody, there's, a no, there's not an Aaron or a her that's coming alongside of you. 
that's encouraging you and that's keeping your, your arms up. I want to just make you aware that every person in this building have experienced spiritual low moments in their life. And we will continue to maybe experience some of those moments because, man, life is hard and Satan throws stuff at us. And it's really hard when we're so private and sometimes prideful that we don't allow anybody to speak into my life and where you can just run to say, brother, I'm struggling with this and this. Will you pray with me? Because we feel so much better and we need it. We need people, godly people that will come alongside of us. And so I want to encourage you, if you're a very private person, find people, pray about people that you will allow to speak into your life and people that you can say, man, I'm going to trust you with some of my battles. Will you pray with me? And then lastly, study God's word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. And it will stir you. It will help you in those hard moments. We were um, able to go to Eagle Brook last night because of a, a, a function training there with Jesse and Kendall. And it was so amazing. I had no expectation going in there and hearing God's message and hearing God's word. And I was just spot on. I left so encouraged how God spoke to me and built up my faith again in that moment. And that's God. When we study his word, his word is powerful. It will build you up. It will bring encouragement. Do not be lazy in this area. And I just want to remind you in a lesson that God's people learned in the wilderness. When we have reached the end of self, we have got to the beginning of God. If you don't have the answer this morning, praise the Lord. God's got this. You just might see the rock this morning. And it might seem dry. But in that rock, we just might find the miracle. Because we serve the God of miracles. And so this morning as we're sitting here, as I'm closing, I want to just give you a second. If you're going through a hard time or any of these points, will you just take a moment to just reflect? Let's just listen together from God and then Christy will invite us to stand and we'll finish with our closing song.
Amen. Will you stand with me as we close the service this morning? Even when we're in the wilderness, you are there with us. We're never alone. You are there with us to teach us, to lead us, help us support each other and have compassion for one another when we are in these times. Lord, I pray that you'll use everything in our lives to remind us again of how much you love us and teach us how to love each other in the same way. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful Sunday. Go in peace. Hey, you made it to the end of this video. Please let us know what you think by leaving a comment on this video or email salem at salemcovenant.org. Don't forget to stay up to date with all of Salem's activities at salemcovenant.org slash events. And since you made it to the end of this video, consider filling out our Connect card. It's just a way for you to start a conversation with us via email or a phone call. There's a link to that in the description box below. All right, see you next week.